Hello, my name is Ara Keshishian and I'd like to talk about bow length and duodenal suture operation. Duodenal suture operation is a weight loss surgical procedure that needs to be individualized for each individual patient. There is a switch component and a sleeve component. When it comes to the switch component, the bow length is a variable that is measured and the lengths dictate the weight loss and subsequently the nutritional profile of the patient. Um, I think this is self-descriptive that one shoe does not fit all. It's important to appreciate that the weight loss surgical procedure needs to be tailored for the patient, not only to take into account the patient's weight, but also comorbidities that are being addressed and treated. Let's look at two patients uh, as an example. The two patients have both BMI of 40. One of them is clearly taller and heavier. Do we really think these two patients are the same even based on their BMI? Clearly not. So they not only do not have the same GI length, um, and from a nutritional point of view, this may explain why if these two patients were subjected to the same operation, such as a quickie cutting gastric bypass or the uh, gastric banding, and to some degree also the sleeve, their outcomes may be so different. Let's just step, take it back um, and talk about cause of obesity, um, genetics, endocrine, uh, diet, and activity all play a uh, role in obesity. We clearly understand now that genetics and endocrine play a significant role into it. Diet and exercise um, have evolved in varying degree as our understanding of obesity has evolved to have varying degrees of uh, influences directly and indirectly into the endocrine and the genetics. We can explore that by um, looking at the genetic aspect of it. Um, for the longest time, understanding of the genetics has been that we were born with it, and now we understand that in fact there may be ways to change our genetics um, after we're born. Uh, the notion of epigenome. Um, explains how certain types of food may actually cause the same genes to result in different expressions in different individuals. What this means is that two identical twins that may have had uh, identical twins that have had the same genes may have different expression based on what type of food they eat and uh, an example of this is how methylation or uh, sort of a suppressor uh, methyl molecule can change and result in expression of genes that two individuals, two identicals had, identical twins had. When it comes to diet as a cause of obesity, we need to clearly distinguish between what we eat and what we absorb. There's a lot of emphasis that's been given into what we eat, and that's where the notion of eating smaller volume or eating healthy has come into play. And absorption um, is what our body does with the food that we eat. Absorption can be a factor of what is it that's been absorbed, whether the absorption is an active or a passive process when it comes to the specific nutrients we're talking about, how much surface area it's being used for absorption, and the time that it takes for the absorption to take place. Any variation or changes in any one of those four will result in changes in the absorption of the food and as a result the nutritional content and the calories that we take in. An example of a actual image of a small bowel and when you look at an MRI of the small bowel we can see the folds 
and under microscope we appreciate how every single one of those lines represent a very deep groove where absorption takes place at the cellular level different disease processes um, some for uh, cause thickening and some cause loss of the deep crevices where the absorption takes place. For the anatomy of absorption, the depth thickness of the mucosa plays a significant role into it. Um, this is adaptive in nature and what I mean by that is it's uh, clear to us that when uh, we compare biliopancreatic limb, which is uh, underused mucosa compared to the common channel in patients that have had the duodenal suture operation, the bowel that the common channel is very hypertrophic and thick, meaning it's very thickened um, versus the biliopancreatic link is relatively thin. Um, the sort of a visual analogy would be if you had uh, an individual that had two arms, one of them in a cast and the other one was exercising all the time and in six months time you took the cast off, the arm that had the cast off and had not been used would have the muscle wasting and thinning out. Um, the other uh, variable when it comes to absorption is the length of the small bowel. And um, there's a lot of evidence that we'll go over that shows length of the small bowel is dictated by the genetics of the height, not the weight. Um, there's a number of papers out there and one of the most recent ones that was just presented as an oral presentation it's being published out there was in um, uh, Chicago that correlates um, the patient's height and the length of the small bowel and that line can be seen is as the patient's height uh, patients are taller there's more small bowel there's clearly a broad variation and it's interesting to know that um, even though the mathemat mathematical expression of this is a linear line there's more of a shorter smaller bowels in shorter patients than the taller patients another study uh, that was looking at um, specifics of how can we um, use a scope to look at the entire length of the small bowel and in order to have that study researchers had to look at the length of the small bowel and this study was a few years ago from New York and essentially what the highlighted box says is that though the small bowel was found to be wildly variable but the linear regression demonstrated a statistically significant relationship between the small bowel length and the height there was no relationship between the BMI and the weight so the notion that overweight patients have a lot of guts um, is scientifically proven to be incorrect. In fact, taller patients have more uh, length of small bowel. So when we talk about the duodenal switch operation and the way the small bowel is divided, the goal would be to improve overall health condition independent of the amount of weight loss. Uh, with that said, the weight loss needs to be maximized by minimizing the nutritional deficiency. Nutritional deficiencies may involve vitamins, minerals, protein, and overall caloric deficiency. Um, when it comes to weight deficiency versus nutritional deficiency, it's a balancing act that you can't have them both. The ideal goal would be to lose all the weight we can without developing any nutritional deficiency and the point to be made here is that those two are mutually exclusive. The bowel length with the duodenal switch operation in my opinion should be uh, measuring the entire length of the small bowel. The comma and the alimentary length need to be a percentage of the total length a variable depending on the patient's height and not the BMI or the weight. As the studies uh, demonstrated the length of the small bowel for a patient is not a function of their body mass index or their preoperative weight but rather a function of their height and as that slide showed even within the linear regression there was a large variability so um, in my opinion if a patient is subjected to the duodenal switch operation with a randomly decided length of the small bowel without really knowing the substrate the absorptive capacity, 
then that increases the potential for both significant weight loss with the nutritional deficiency or inadequate weight loss if the patient is not um, uh, having uh, adequate amount of small bowel rerouted. In summary, common alimentary limb needs to be a percentage of the total length, which is a function of the patient's height and not weight. Procedure should be customized. And maybe another reason why DS has the best long-term outcome of all surgical procedures. Any questions?